As COVID numbers across the country only are surging, the one thing that hospitals have completely run out of is oxygen. In most major hospitals, oxygen supply is in critically short supply. So short that doctors are having to make that very tough choice of who gets it and who doesn't. Essentially, who lives and who doesn't. In Nasik, an oxygen leak at the municipal hospital has left 22 COVID patients who were on ventilators dead. This is a war, the biggest India has ever fought or ever will. A time when high-end defence technology needs to be used to save lives. The Defence and Research Development Organisation, whose job is to develop cutting-edge fighters and missiles and combat platforms for India's armed forces, is now harnessing this technology that they have developed for the Tejas aircraft to make medical-grade oxygen. The Tejas is India's first indigenous fighter. It has on board an oxygen generation system. Now, this system breaks down molecular components of the atmospheric air and provides continuous oxygen to the pilot for long durations and in high altitude flights. Now, this sophisticated technology is being used to set up oxygen plants that can provide medical grade oxygen around the clock at a rate of a thousand litres per minute. The DRDO has transferred this technology to private players who are using it to quickly put together 10 oxygen plants for Uttar Pradesh. Not just that, the DRDO is also offering a contraption called the Supplemental Oxygen Delivery System that is used by soldiers in extremely high altitude areas, say like Siachen or Ladakh. This system delivers oxygen based on your oxygen saturation levels and prevents a person from sinking into hypoxia, which is fatal in most cases. Now, this is exactly the situation that gets replicated in a COVID person, which is why oxygen availability becomes a matter of life and death. The oxygen delivery system is light, it's portable, it can be used at home for mild cases. The DRDO is hoping that it will be available in the market soon, but private players will have to step in for mass production. Apart from offering sophisticated military technology to fight the epidemic, another unprecedented step has been announced by the Ministry of Defence. The Indian Armed Forces will be opening their hospitals to civilians wherever possible. As health infrastructure across the country is stretched to the limit, with some 2.75 lakh cases being reported every day, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has asked the Army to pitch in. All three forces, which means the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, run their own hospitals, which cater to the needs of veterans, of serving officers, jawans, their families as well. Now, these hospitals themselves are dealing with a crunch because of the rapidly spreading double mutant. The Army itself is dealing with a deluge of cases in all command hospitals, including Lucknow and Sikandrabad. In Delhi, the Army has had to shut down regular services at the base hospital in the Kant to convert it into a COVID-only facility. In another major move, the Army, Navy and Air Force have been asked to identify and mobilize their retired doctors who have been fully vaccinated to man the COVID hospitals that are being created by the DRDO and HAL across the country. The ministry, which is the Defence Ministry, is flooded with petitions from various states to construct these pop-up COVID hospitals like the one that the DRDO has opened in Delhi. Within two hours of the facility opening 250 beds, all of them were taken. The ministry has also asked all 63 cantonment boards that run their own hospitals to open their doors to people who live outside camp premises as well. The DRDO is in the process of setting up and reactivating COVID hospitals in six cities, including Delhi, Lucknow, Ahmedabad, Banaras and Nasik. In Delhi, the DRDO is in the process of setting up a 500-bed COVID facility to ease the pressure on Delhi's beleaguered hospitals. All beds will have oxygen support. The facility is at the same location near the Delhi airport, where it had set up a 1,000-bed facility last year. That makeshift hospital was folded up this February as the number of cases dipped and there was no one coming to these hospitals. The facility will be staffed and monitored by the DG Armed Forces Medical Services.
Treatment will be free, but an RT-PCR report and Aadhaar card are mandatory. Lucknow, the Defence Minister's constituency, is getting two similar COVID hospitals with a combined strength of 1,000 beds. These hospitals will include 250 to 350 ICU beds as well. The locations that have been identified for these hospitals are the Hajj House, which is on Kanpur Road, the Golden Blossom Resort on Fezabad Road. Both should be operational in the next few days and will come as a huge, huge relief to a city where patients are dying waiting for ICU beds. Another jumbo 1000 bed facility is being set up by the DRDO and HAL, which is Hindustan Aeronautical Limited, at Avadh Shilpgram in Lucknow. Not just hospital beds, ventilators, oxygen and space in crematoriums and graveyards has run out in the city of Nawabs. It has more than 40,000 active cases, including the Chief Minister of the State himself, Yogi Adityanath. The other state capital where the DRDO is pitching in with COVID duty is Ahmedabad. This is where a 900-bed hospital is being set up at the request of Home Minister Amit Shah. The MHA is deputing 25 doctors and 75 paramedics from the paramilitary forces at this hospital. In Patna, the DRDO has converted the ESI hospital into a full-fledged 500-strong COVID bed facility. It is now operational. The DRDO says its regular job is to develop cutting-edge technology for India's armed forces and keep it battle-ready. But given the fact that COVID is the biggest war the country will ever fight, everyone wants to do their bit. Just for perspective, the pandemic has killed more Indian citizens than all the wars India has fought, including World War I and World War II.